Hey guys, JNM here with a new C++ tutorial about STL arrays. For this I created a new empty project. It just has a main function. In that I write the title C++ STL arrays to the standard out. Ok, before we start with the STL arrays, let me show you the old way of defining arrays in C++. You start with a type, for example an int, then the name of the variable, followed by square brackets. Ok, and then you add the items to the array in curly brackets. Now I have the array and I want to know the size, how many items are inside of it. And most of the time it is done like that. You get the whole memory of the array and divide it by the allocated memory of one item, for example the first one. And this is not very nice code, quite complicated. And if I want to loop over all the items of the array, for instance to print them to the screen, I can use a for loop that runs as long as the index that has to be incremented is less than the size of the array. And inside of the loop we use the index to get an item of the array. So this works, but you will see in a moment that using the STL array is much more comfortable. So let's comment this out, the whole block by pressing Ctrl KC and start with the STL arrays. First of all I have to include a header and this is called array, surprise, and then we can create it again with the namespace std followed by the keyword array and the type has to be defined in these angle brackets and this is a drawback the size. So we have to know how many items we are going to add. I now define here more items than 6. Without building, without compiling the project, I get an error indication here in the IDE that I have too many items in the array. Ok, that's nice, so I increase the size. But wouldn't it be much more comfortable when I write it like that without the size and even without the type? A bit like in scripting. Yes, you can. Just go to the project properties and here under C++ language you can decide to use C++ 17 and its language features and one of these is to create your array like that. The data type and the size of the array is given by the items that we added because these are 8 integers and C++ 17 is smart enough to deduce this. For every item the type has to be the same, now let's change, let's say, one item to a floating point and then build the project and we get an error. So you see, this is type safe. I modify this back to an int and build the project and now it compiles without any errors. Alright, and now let me show you how you can loop over the items in a much more comfortable way by using a so-called ranged based for loop. This is possible with the STL array. You can loop over the items without incrementing an index. You just get the next item in the array for every iteration. So X is not an index. It is the item in the array for the current iteration. And inside of the loop you don't need an index. You can refer to the item, use it directly. And then I print the items to the standard out. Ok, and another nice feature is that you can sort the array very easily by using sort in the std namespace. As parameters you need the start and the end of the array. You can use the iterators of the array begin and end. I will explain what iterators are in one of the next tutorials. And when we print it out now you see that the array is sorted in an ascending sort order which is the default. But you can use a third parameter here for the sort function to define the sort order. When I use less equal, I will also get the ascending sort order. As type I use int, like the type of my array. But instead of less equal, I can use greater equal. And now it's sorted in the opposite direction. Of course you can also access items by index by using the square brackets. 
But before you do this, and this is true for the old style arrays and also for the STL arrays, don't refer to an index that does not exist. For an array, you should check that the size is greater or equal than the index that you are using. And always keep in mind that the index starts by zero, which means the index of the first item is zero and the index of the last item is the size of the array minus one. So when I try to get an item that does not exist, like here the index 10, then your program is crashing. So be careful with that. Okay guys, I hope you liked this short introduction to STL arrays. If you like my channel, then don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions, then add these to the comments below. Follow me on my Instagram, Facebook or Twitter. And I'll see you in the next one here on JNM.